Right fans, welcome back. Today we are looking at Excel or CSV to QGIS part 2. It's only taken three years for part 2 to come out, so it should be good. Mo got in touch a couple of weeks ago with a great question about CSVs and Excel files and bringing them into QGIS. Thanks a lot for the question Mo and thanks for all the other questions that have been coming in. I do get to them as soon as I can. So we'll be looking at that in this video and I'm also going to have a look at a couple of other bits as well. But for now, let's dive in and see how we can bring an Excel file into QGIS. <laughs> Here I am in QGIS 3.14.16 and I'm currently doing the 30 Days of Maps, which is a Twitter challenge set by Soppy to make a map every day for 30 days it's pretty fun at the moment as you can see i'm only on day three but for day three for polygons uh, i was using an excel file and if i just drop this down in the browser as well uh, we see some outputs and there's my polys excel sx now this is what it looks like in excel it is a sheet of polytechnics that then became universities Poly gone, ha ha, but um tush. Anyway, uh, I made this Excel sheet, saved it as an Excel SX, and that was all good. And in order to bring it into QGIS, I am going to use the browser. So I'm just gonna grab this table, drag it down, and drop it into Q. There we go, it's got the table symbol next to it, and this is in my layers panel. Now, if I right click on this and go to open attribute table, we should see similar to what we had in Excel. And note that with the field names, I've been quite careful not to include any special characters like asterisks or exclamation marks. And I have also not got any spaces in there. I use the underscore if there is a space needed. That is a hangover from working with shapefiles, but generally speaking, quite good practice. Anyway, I also have two columns for coordinates, X and Y, and these have been recorded in WGS84 or EPSG4326. Now I have my table in. How do I create points from it? At the moment it has no geometry and QGIS does not know how to draw it. So if I go up to the top and go to processing into the processing toolbox and use this handy little search bar, what do I want to do? I would like to make points from Aha, uh -huh. create a points layer from table. That is exactly what I'd like to do. So if I double click on that and open it up, QGIS is quite sensible. It suggests that I would like to use polys. That is correct. For my X field, I am going to use, you guessed it, coords X. And for my Y field, I'm going to use coords Y. One of the very common problems with this is getting these columns the wrong way around. It does happen, I still do it occasionally, and you might get data that's labeled incorrectly too. So just keep that in mind. Um, for the target CRS, I know that these coordinates have arrived in EPSG 4326, so that is what I am going to use. That is also another common problem with bringing in coordinates. Know what they were recorded in. And we'll talk about that a bit more later on. Points from the table, where are we going to save them? I am going to create a temporary layer. Let's run that. All right, so I've run it. Here are my points. It kind of sketches out the shape of England, roughly. And we have a layer in our layers table. So that's good. Here we've got a little beetle or memory chip that says this is only a temporary scratch layer. If I close QGIS, this layer will be deleted. If I want to immortalize this layer, I can click on here and choose a suitable file name. I suggest you use the browse button to go somewhere sensible and save it there. But that is how you can make it permanent. Currently, I'm just going to leave it as it is for now because that is fine. And if we open up the attribute table here, here we have exactly a carbon copy of what we previously had. Now, if you saw the first video, you would know that in order to bring in a CSV, we go up to layer, add layer, and add delimited text layer. Now, the reason I went in through the browser was because if we go to delimited text layer and we choose an XLSX, it doesn't really work. 
So the only way I've found at the moment to get hold of an XLS X layer is to just go through the browser. Pretty simple. If anybody knows of a better way, please do get in touch and let me know in the comments. So my points are in, that's all great. What I would like to do is just run a quick check and make sure that they're in the right spot. So I'm gonna bring in Bing Virtual Earth. Boom, there we go. Yeah, that looks all right. The UK is a little bit squished and that's because we have a project CRS set to 4326. If I want the UK to not look squished, I can use 3857, which is pseudo Mercator. Ah! Okay, that, and the UK looks like it is standing up again. Excellent. So in the next section of this video, we are going to talk about CRS. CRS is super important in GIS, and it stands for Coordinate Reference Systems. And even if you've got a very basic understanding of CRS, it can help with a lot of GIS problems. So I'm just going to go through a couple of things here. One is with the points from table. If I just open up the attribute table, these are the columns that we used in order to draw the points from our original polys table. Now, once we have created a geospatial file, the geometry of these points is saved elsewhere. It's no longer saved in our attribute table. We just use these values to draw the points initially. And I can demonstrate that by going into an edit session. Once I'm in my edit session, I can go to delete field and I'm going to delete code Y and code X. Okay, that and they have gone. If I save my edits and stop editing, my points don't vanish. They are still there. And that's because in a shapefile particularly, but also in other types of geospatial file, there's a separate part that stores the geometry. It makes sense really because if we have a line, so we've got a million vertices, you do not want a field in your attribute table that has to deal with a million point vertices for every feature. That would be terrible. So if we want to find out what the location of these points is using our attribute table, we can do that. We can go to open field calculator and I'm going to create a new field. The output field name is going to be called X coord, and it is going to be a decimal number. And we'll go for precision of six. Don't really need it, but that'll do. Now, in terms of building our expression, this bit in the middle is where all the fun stuff is, and I would like geometry. So I'm going to go down here, keep scrolling, and I'm looking for the X coordinate. Now we've got two x's in here. One has got a dollar sign before it, and that means that it is a property of the feature. So the property of, in this case, we've got Anglia Ruskin University. So if I double click on this one, you can see it jumps over to my expression and we get a preview at the bottom as well. So that looks good. I'm gonna okay that. And we have a new column called x coord and it has our coordinate for the X. So let's do that again for the Y. I'm going to jump in here and call it Y coord. And I'm going to go for decimal, go for six. And I can use this search function too. So if I go dollar sign Y, that will get me straight to my Y. Double click that and I get the preview at the bottom again, 52.0830. 83. Okay. And that's created a new field for our Y coordinate. So we can extract the coordinates if we want. This is just one way to do it. There are other ways. And it will respect the CRS that our layer is in. So I'm just going to stop editing and save. Close that. And you can see here our points from table is in 4326. So that's how we can get our coordinates in WGS84 or 4326 or whatever the layer projection is. Now, what if I need to change this projection and I want to get the X and the Y coordinate in a different CRS? The first thing I'd need to do is reproject this layer. And if I go over to my processing toolbox, I can type in projection. Here we have under vector general. We have got four different things that we can use to tinker with our projection. 
And I really encourage you to read through these. Uh, if you just open this up and have a look at the bump on the right, it's very much well worth reading the help. Uh, it, it's quite detailed, but it's, it's very clear as to what each of these tools do. Now, my points from table already has a CRS, and therefore to give it a new one, I need to reproject the layer. So I'll double click on this, and I'd like to go points from table, that's my input layer. And my target CRS is going to be, let's go for UTM 30 North. UTM 30 North is in meters, and I'm going to OK that. This looks fine. I'm just going to leave it as a temporary layer for time's sake. And there we go. Close that. So now I have a new layer, which is reprojected. And the CRS of this one, if we have a look, is 326.30. That is UTM 30 North. Now if I open up my attribute table, got the X code and the Y code and these are in WGS84. Now let's just make one with open the field calculator and let's call this one XUTM. Uh, and we'll go for a decimal number, just give it precision two, that'll do. And let's search for dollar sign X, pop that in. And you can see in the preview already, this is in meters rather than in degrees, minutes, seconds or decimal degrees. And so the coordinates are really, really different. I'm just going to add that, and you can see how different they are to the WGS84 coordinates. Now let's do that again quickly for Y. Uh, I'll just go to Field Calculator and Y UTM. And it will be decimal, and it will be two. Search for dollar sign Y. Practice makes perfect, right? And it goes. And again, you can see the meters down at the bottom. OK, that. And there we have UTM. So we've got our coordinates in WGS84 and also in UTM. So I'm just going to save this and close out of that. Excellent. Now for the final part of this video, I thought I'd just show you how in QJS3 we can bring in a CSV and also what happens if you get the CRS wrong. So if I go up to layer and go to add layer, now I've created a CSV or a delimited text layer from my reprojected layer. So I'll just click on this and if I go to search, I should have a UTM poly CSV. Let's open that up. All right, and the file format is a CSV. The record and fields options. First record has field names. Yes, that's all fine. Decimal separator is a column. No, don't need to trim fields. Don't need to discard empty fields. All of that is good. Now, the geometry definition is where it gets interesting. We have in here fields X coord, Y coord. We also have X UTM and Y UTM. Now the X coords are recorded in WGS84. There we go, Geometry CRS WGS84. And our table is going to look like this. That looks great. Now if I add that in, and it comes, all looks good. Now if I repeat this and bring in UTM's polys, okay. And I go for the UTM and the UTM but I leave my geometry CRS as WGS84 and hit add. And they come, but they are not covering the previous points. And if I go to zoom to layer, they cannot be found. So if you are getting this, I mean, I don't think it's even drawing them. To be fair, if I just turn that off and use zoom to layer, yeah, that's not working at all. So it's very important to know what your coordinates are in, in terms of coordinate systems or CRS. Now I could bring in these UTM polys without a problem using the UTM column, but I do need to make sure that I've got the right CRS. So I'm going to go to add layer again, add delimit text, go up here, search for that CSV, open that up, and we're going to go for UTM and UTM. Now, 
we created these columns, we know that it was in UTM 30 North. And so if I set my CRS as that and add these in, close, let's zoom to these. And there we have the new ones. So it's very important to know what your CRS is for any coordinates that you're bringing in from a table. That was just a brief run through of it. If you have any questions about it, do let me know. Thanks a lot for all the comments and all the likes. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because it really helps the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and happy mapping.